So what we're looking at over there, that's a quarter section of the Falcon 9 uh, uh, 17 foot diameter fairing. It's uh, 17 foot diameter obviously and, 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 and 50 feet long. It's capable of taking the largest satellites in the world and it, it could actually literally fit a, a city bus in, in, in that uh, fairing. It's that big because that's, that's just a quarter section of it. Uh, it's made of uh, carbon fiber, it's very lightweight um, and uh, uses the most you know, advanced uh, uh, analytical techniques to uh, optimize the mass. So it's actually, I believe, the lightest, lightest weight fairing of its kind as well. Uh, what we're looking at here is the uh, Dragon spacecraft pressure vessel. So it's almost done. Uh, we just need to do the, the forward and aft bulkheads. It's actually upside down right now, but you can see the main hatch, the, some of the windows. Um, the, the actual uh, common berthing mechanism where it berths to the space station is, um, well, right there, um, because it would ordinarily be the other way around. Um, and this is an actual flight fidelity article uh, that's going to go through full qualification testing. Right. This area is, is uh, dedicated to our Dragon spacecraft assembly. So uh, you see various tools. That's for our heat shield, uh, making the composite parts in our heat shield. Um, over there is are, are the, the side the, the side shields and the nose cone. Uh, that's that's our that's the engineering test article. That's basically engineering pathfinder for our heat shield for Dragon, which is to use a very advanced material called the phenolic impregnated carbon ablator, uh, which is the really the best heat shield material you could possibly have. And this is our engineering test article of our Dragon spacecraft. Um, so it's not flight fidelity. With the part we saw earlier, with, with we saw the welded piece, that's actually flight fidelity. But this was used as an engineering pathfinder to figure out how we might make Dragon. And um, actually, it's been very useful. Uh, on the right there is a, is a space station uh, berthing mechanism ring. So that's an actual ring that will mate to the space station. Um, there's another one on the Dragon itself although the guide vanes aren't, aren't present. Here are various pieces like uh, windows and pushers and frangible nuts and these are structural bulkheads, uh, structural reinforcing bulkheads. That's the little model we use to uh, determine splashdown loading. So here we are in the east high bay. So we have two very large high bays. We're in the east one right now. The east high bay is used for Falcon 9 uh, stage construction um, and it's also temporarily used for storage, which is why you see various bits and pieces around, uh, behind me. This area under the high bay is used for Falcon 9 tank fabrication. So you can see behind me various uh, barrel sections for Falcon 9. That's actually serial number two. That completed tank is serial number two of Falcon 9. Serial number one is on the test stand in Texas. And then serial number three is in, in barrel sections on the floor. Um, and we're getting ready to uh, weld together those barrel sections and create our third uh, tank, which would actually be the first flight tank. So the first one is a run tank, second one is a qualification tank, and the third one will see flight. That's a Falcon 1 second stage bulge former. So that's, that's a classic bulge forming tool that's used to take uh, two welded cones of, of uh, a typical refractory alloy metal like uh, columbium hafnium alloy um, and belging it to a round contour, which is the uh, optimized contour for maximizing the efficiency of rocket thrust. This uh, cleaner here is also climate controlled, particularly controlled and it's, it's, it's currently used for propulsion components as well as temporarily it's used to do composite layout. So that giant tool you see there is the mandrel that's used to create the composite parts for Falcon 9. So it creates the, um, the, the interstage, the dragon trunk section, and the, the propulsion section skirt. Um, anything that's a body diameter, uh, uh, a 12 foot diameter uh, cylindrical part. And, um, that, that'll be moved over to the actual composites area when we have that uh, composites preparation room done, which will be fairly soon. This area is where we do the, uh, a lot of the Falcon 1 structural uh, assembly. So behind me, that's, that's a Falcon 1 uh, half section of a nose cone. Uh, that's the tool on which the nose cones are made. Uh, that's a, an avionics, uh, or rather a, a payload adapter cone. That's another payload adapter cone. Uh, that's a mandrel for the um, the, the, the Falcon 1 uh, interstage, which is similar to the Falcon 9 interstage. In fact, the Falcon 9 interstage is just a scaled up version of the Falcon 1 interstage. This is a barrel section for Falcon 1 Flight 5. So we have Flight 3 uh, on the island uh, in the Quadrant Atoll ready for launch, almost ready for launch. Flight 4 is going to be right behind that. We'll launch uh, um, uh, in about uh, three or four months' time. Um, and then this is Flight 5, which will launch sometime in the first half of the next year. Uh, we have a lot of customers that are interested in that and we expect to do a deal on that fairly soon. Um, and this area is also used for 
our composites of fabrication. So we've got a big oven there, which is used to cook big pots and a small oven for smaller parts. Uh, what we're looking at here is a Falcon 1 upper stage. Uh, so you can see the, the engine and actuators and the, um, all that plumbing is for the attitude control system. Uh, it will actually hold the pressure in bottles. There's a lot more stuff that goes in the back there, but you can see the tank and the little skirt at the back that holds a lot of the structure. That's for flight four, and then the flight five unit is, is right there behind it with obviously not much stuff done on it yet. So this is a our little snack section. Um, so we offer uh, people at work here, you know, get free snacks and drink, which is kind of a common thing in the internet world, but relatively unusual in the space world. And uh, we think if people are working late and, and, and then and they need a snack or something, they should be, have one readily available. All right, well, thanks for following me on the tour. That, uh, that was just SpaceX Hawthorne. There's actually a lot more um, other SpaceX facilities. We have a big test site in Texas. We've got a test, uh, a launch uh, pad at Cape Canaveral, a launch island in the Kwajalein Atoll. Um, and uh, we're looking for great people um, of, of all kinds to join the company. So if you're interested, please send us a resume.